Notice something before we go on. Even though we have a true effect of 20 points, that is, we've shifted the center of our sampling distribution of z sub x bar up to here, we still will get sample means sometimes from this distribution down here around 110, or even sometimes down here around 102. We'll also experience sampling error in the other direction. Sometimes, from this red distribution, we'll get a sample with a mean up at 140. Sampling error is an ever-present property of our universe. Just because there's a true effect doesn't mean we won't get sampling error. We always get sampling error with our sample statistics. But importantly, we've shifted this distribution, and that's the true effect that we're talking about. On average, we've shifted everybody by 20 IQ points, so the types of sample means we're likely to get are 20 points higher on average. Now let's think about what will happen in this situation. Let's go back to the blue distribution. Remember, the blue distribution is what we start with as researchers. We don't have knowledge of the red distribution. The only reason we can see it here is because we're playing make-believe as a pedagogical tool, so we can visualize what statistical power is. But when we start the experiment, we start it with the idea that we're taking a sample from this blue distribution. And that's where we get our critical regions. That is, the negative 1.96 z-score out to negative infinity, and the positive 1.96 z-score out to positive infinity. Those are the regions we picked with an alpha of 0.05 where if we got a sample more extreme, we would be willing to reject the idea that our sample is coming from the blue distribution. Let me say it again. If we get a sample that's more extreme than positive 1.96 in the positive direction or less than negative 1.96 in the negative direction, those are samples that we agreed before we did the study that would lead us to reject the null hypothesis. So, if those are the regions, if those are the cut points where we need to exceed in order to reject the null, let's consider the portion of the sampling distribution of z sub x bar if h1 is true, that is the sampling distribution under the alternative hypothesis, let's consider the region that's more positive than that z critical of positive 1.96. If you look at this region, that portion of this sampling distribution are all the samples that would allow us to reject the null. Remember, we're treating our samples in relation to the distribution under the null hypothesis, but we know, because we're playing make-believe, that our sample is coming from the alternative distribution, the sampling distribution of z sub x bar, if h1 is true. So this region is the proportion of z sub x bar under h1 where our z sub x bar statistics are exceeding the z critical. This is also the location where the two-tailed p-value of each of those z sub x bars would be less than alpha. And remember, anytime we have a two-tailed p-value less than alpha, that's a situation where we reject the null hypothesis. So these are the samples where we'll actually say there's a real effect in the world. These are the samples where we've detected that real effect. Remember, if our sample is coming from the distribution under H1, the distribution where the alternative is true, and we reject the null hypothesis, well, that's a correct decision. So this region I've just shaded for this particular situation is the power of this test statistic. That is, this is the region of 1 minus beta. And the complement, all the samples on the other side of that cut point, that is, all the samples over here, where we didn't exceed the critical value, well, that is the region of beta. Now notice, I have both of the distributions shaded here, but we can remove completely the distribution under the null hypothesis. This is the distribution where our sample is coming from. The reason I left up that other distribution is because that's how we decided on our critical value. That's how we decided what would count as evidence. But in reality, this is the sampling situation we're in if there's a true effect. If there's a true effect, our sample is coming from the distribution under the alternative hypothesis. And yet, we retain the idea of the null hypothesis distribution because that's where we start with as scientists. That's the only thing we can use as a reference point for whether our sample is unlikely to be caused by chance. But make sure you see that connection. Our sample is coming from this distribution if we're talking about power. Remember, power is only defined if there's a true effect. So we have to consider our sample as coming from this distribution, which is why we have a region that counts as power and a region that counts as a miss.
Let me put back our other distribution, and let's imagine we didn't increase people's IQ scores, but instead we ended up decreasing IQ scores by the same amount. What if on average we shifted everybody's IQ down 20 points? I want you to see that the situation would be identical. Power now is the region of our sampling distribution under the alternative hypothesis where we had a sample z sub x bar less than negative 1.96. And it's the same amount of power. As long as the effect size is the same, it doesn't matter if we've shifted up or shifted down. Power is still defined because we're taking a sample from a distribution where the alternative hypothesis is true. Now let's return to our original situation. I think it's easier to think about us improving people's IQ, and certainly that's something we would hope if we're giving a nootropic. So now let's consider the factors that affect power. But before I do, take a second to think on your own of what things would affect the likelihood we would reject a null hypothesis when there really is an effect in the world.